Well, we got responses, and we started doing these um, house concerts as filler dates on my club tours. And at the end of the five months, on every single measure, from the enjoyment we were having at the shows, from the, the performance experience, from the names we were getting on the mailing list, to the merch we were selling, to the money we were making, on every measure, the house concerts outperformed the club shows. Okay, so we do all of our house concerts, I should say the vast majority, 95% of our house concerts are done on a, a, a donation basis. We call it an open donation basis, meaning that um, the guests, when they're invited to come to the show, are told that it's going to be a donation-based event. Please come prepared to make a donation to the artist at the conclusion of the show. We, we specifically ask our hosts not to suggest a donation amount. We tell them just to make it an open donation. And there's, there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, if there's somebody on the guest list that maybe just lost their job or they're, you know, on, in lean times, and, you know, if the invitation said we suggest a $20 donation to come to the show, they're not going to show up. Some people don't have that kind of, you know, cash to spend on entertainment. But the flip side of that is that another reason we don't suggest a donation amount is that if you tell somebody that this show is worth $15, they won't put in $20. If you tell them it's worth $20, they won't put in $50. And I'm telling you this because the very first house concert that we did, that one in San Diego I told you about, it, we did not have a suggested donation. It was just open. At the end of the night, there was a $100 bill in that vase. Starting, you know, a good house concert starts with preparation. So before you even are on your way to the house, you know, you, um, it, it's, a, it, it's incumbent upon on me to prepare my host to be a good host, to make a successful show. And so, you know, I help them from the beginning, from putting together their guest list. Okay, you know, if, you, if you're aiming for 20 people to come, you should invite 40. We have discovered over our experience in doing this that about half the people who are invited tend to show up. So invite double the number of people that you would like to see at the actual concert. Secondly, in the invitations, we ask the hosts to always ask for an RSVP because um, we found that when people are required to say, yes, I'll be there, they're much more likely to actually show up than if it's like, oh, hey, come by, you know, we're doing this thing, we'd love to see you. When people have to say they're going to be there, they're more likely to actually show up. And it also puts in their mind, this is an event that I have said I'm going to go to. It's a special thing. It's not just a hangout at my friend's house. You know? So we're starting the psychology of the house concert concept, right, but with, with the invitation. So then leading up to the show, we, um, we give, I give all of our hosts specific invitation language so that they can communicate early um, to all of the guests exactly you know, um, like that it's going to be a donation-based concert. If there's any th specific things they need to know about the setup, you know, um, we put that all in the, in the invitation. So we help the host as, as we plan. The day of the show is also super important. And um, what we do, um, the, like the setup, for instance, is, is a really important um, aspect. We touched on this briefly earlier. But when we, when we set up a house concert, it's important for us that everybody is everybody needs to have a seat. <laughs> this is not like standing around listening to music. So we, you know, and that doesn't mean that the host has to have 20 chairs either. It just means that people need to be focused during the concert time in the, in the area. So maybe like blankets on the grass in the backyard or pillows on the floor in, in a packed living room. That's, those are all options. But the idea is that we're, we set up a space so that it's very clear when the, when the guests walk in the door, they say, oh, okay, there's the food and drinks hanging out over here. And that's obviously the concert area. That's where we're going to be going to listen to music so that it's set up before anyone even comes and, and see that, that that's where the concert's going to be. Um, we, we leave time in the schedule. We have a very sort of strict schedule that we follow at a house concert that leaves time for the talking, the hanging out, the, that kind of thing, and then carves out the time for the concert. So we always show up um, at the host's house an hour before guests are asked to arrive. And that's, you know, do the sound set up and sound check, set up the merch, have a moment to just get, you know, get to know the host, chit-chat a bit. We also spend that, uh, use part of that time to coach them on their donation announcement, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, but that's, that's sort of the pre-show prep. The first hour then, so let's say that the concert's going to start at 8. All the guests have been invited to come at 7. 
So from 7 to 8 is hangout time. And there's, it's really important to have that time for a couple of reasons. Number one, you know, um, it's, uh, it's nice for people to be able to come and get comfortable, have a drink, talk with their friends, just kind of like ease into the space a little bit. It's also great for latecomers. So if you're not, you know, if you, if you say come at 7, concerts at 7, inevitably 20 minutes later someone's going to be coming stumble, stumbling in and interrupting your concert, right? So it gives us sort of a buffer time for that. Um, and thirdly, it gives you an opportunity to start making connections with people before you even play. So by the time you get up to play, you're not a stranger to the crowd. Right. You're you're the guy who's been sitting there asking people about their job or, you know, oh, hey, where did you travel, you know, on your vacation this summer. You've already gotten to know them. You've started the connection so that by the time you do concert time, they already feel like they know you. Hmm. They're on your side, right. you know, and they're rooting for you. So, like, you, you've, you've gotten a leg up you know, because you've had that connection time beforehand. So what we do for the donations is this. As my last note is still ringing in the air at the end of the concert, the host comes up and stands next to me and says something like this. Thank you, Shannon, so much for this incredible experience. I hope you all enjoyed this as much as I did. Let's show her our generosity. If you remember, this is a donation-based concert. I'm going to leave this vessel right here on Shannon's keyboard. Please come up and be as generous as you can be to show her our appreciation for this. And then we all walk away. I walk away to the merch table. <laughs> but we leave that vessel there so that people can come and just take care of that as they will with no pressure. It's not like church. We're not passing the hat. you know. Um, it's, and also an important thing is that you notice we do the donations at the end of the show, not at the door on their way in. And the reason for that is this. What you do is basic fundraising 101, right? You show them the cool thing and then you ask them for the money. <laughs> so, so why would they be motivated to be very generous on their way in the door before they've even heard you sing, you know? So yeah. let them have the experience, and then let them show you how they appreciated that with their donation. Thank you so much, Shannon. I uh, really, really appreciate your time, and, and the best of luck with everything. I know the summer's over, and now you're into a different season, but... I'll see you sometime soon in uh, Los Angeles, and thank you so much. Thank you for having thank me. You for it's having really me. fun. It's really fun.